Hi, my name is Jenna Common. I'm an audiologist here at the VA hospital. And I'm going to be talking to you today about the audiology side of things and a new referral form that I think will really simplify the communication between your specialties in our department. So, as physicians here at the VA, we typically see much more noise exposure than outside of military service. There can be significant hearing loss due to noise exposure, acoustic trauma from pressure waves. We also see a lot of head injuries and traumatic brain injury and Agent Orange and toxin exposure. These are some things that we all see, but we face a lot in the audiology department. The most common complaints that we hear is they're suffering with hearing loss, they're not hearing as well as they used to, they're not understanding speech from family members, they can't hear in restaurants, things like that. Tinnitus is also a big thing that we see and we deal with that can cause sleep deprivation, leading into depression, suicidal tendencies, and as we know, this accompanies hearing loss very often. Also dizziness and vertigo, those vestibular systems. We handle all of that. Okay, so here is our scope of assessment, if you will. We have the standard audiometric um, test battery, as well as electrophysiologic testing for cortical function and processing, and then vestibular to handle those balance issues. So if we see somebody with traumatic brain injury, obviously we want the medical side handled first, and then to assess their hearing, because it is important that they get intervention so that brain can heal, we would do audiologic testing to monitor their hearing throughout the, the healing process. But we might also want to do electrophys. Um, we want to see how is sound traveling past the cochlea up the brain stem and see the effect on their cognitive processing. So some common things with traumatic brain injury it can very much cause dizziness, tinnitus, hearing loss, and some speech and language problems. So depending on the injury, we can see a whole range of different types of hearing losses and different causes. So for speech and language, since various parts of the brain can be affected by TBI, they may present with confirmed or just signs of aphasia. Um, a lot of swallowing problems, so definitely have to look out for that dysphagia. And difficulties in cognitive processing, both receptive and expressive um, language and processing, and apraxia as well. So these factors, especially with speech and language, motor, um, and emotional signs, this can help differentiate TBI from blast-induced acoustic trauma, for instance. These symptoms are actually very similar between the two, very similar hearing loss patterns and causes. With acoustic trauma, it tends to be a little bit more localized to the outer to inner ear, a little less so on the brain, but it's not impossible for that to happen. But with TBI, we're gonna see much more severe impacts and less conductive uh, hearing loss, more retrocochlear. And, and then we have the noise-induced hearing loss. With these, we're going to possibly see people that ask for a lot of repetition or that they may just fake understanding because they've given up on trying to understand. They'll rely a lot on lip reading, so if you cover your mouth when you talk, their speech understanding may plummet. 
they'll report that they can't understand um, women when they speak or children because as we know that tends to lie in those high frequencies. So when it comes to speech with that hearing loss, we'll, we may see that they talk at a much higher volume because they can't monitor their, their vocal tone anymore or not as well as they used to. So as we know, veterans face a unique set of obstacles when it comes to these problems. TBI and hearing loss tinnitus, all of these things can interact and really have a heavy impact on quality of life. These may all work together to cause or worsen depression, um, suicidal thoughts, the veterans may even turn to addiction, isolation, and as we know, untreated hearing loss may also worsen or exacerbate symptoms of cognitive deterioration or dementia. And especially for veterans who may be struggling with PTSD, these other problems may have a, a very detrimental effect. So we want to note all of those symptoms, psychosocial, emotional, all of that, and their perceptions on how their quality of life has changed. We want to know all of that. So this new referral form is very neat and organized, and it will function as both a case history form as well as a referral form for audiology, but even beyond audiology. It can be used outside of our VA system or internally. So if veterans are participating in the program where they are able to seek services outside of the VA, then those physicians can also use this form and help. it can help them communicate with us what, what they've observed in that patient. It has spaces for all the necessary patient information that we as VA doctors must have for our system, the military information, service dates, things of that nature, as well as the basic patient information. So this form has easy to mark boxes that's going to make that case history go very quickly and help us gather all the information that, that we need and help progress through the case history. So a better view of this form. So we have that patient information here and the military service branch, all the things that we would typically ask the patient during our evaluations, whether new or as a refresher eval. So we have medical information. This is important whether they're currently seeking these services or already receiving them, inpatient or outpatient, whether inside or outside the VA, it would help all of us to know what they're already receiving so we can really have collaboration with their other therapists, clinicians, and doctors. There's a medical condition and family history section here. Most, most of these listed are the more common medical problems that can impact hearing tinnitus and the audiology side. There's a space to include others and for any known medications or dosages. There's a spot here for a primary care physician if they do happen to have one. And this is the patient symptom area. So we have tinnitus and characteristics of tinnitus. So instead of having to jot down, oh, it's low frequency, roaring tinnitus, you can just check the box. The affected ears, right, left, check both if it's bilateral. And the duration, whether it's constant or intermittent. And then a box to include when did it begin, has it gotten worse, things of that nature. There's a vestibular section for those vertigo or balance issues that the patient may be having and some 
some pattern factors that we'll see, such as migraines, and also the box to add your own notes, and hearing loss. Have, have they worn hearing aids before? Um, are they currently wearing them? Have they had a hearing evaluation? And some of the more common um, difficulties that people with hearing loss tend to have, such as hearing in restaurants. And then, again, another note for details. We have a speech, language, and cognition section with some common speech and language disorders that we see in our veterans. And then the patient speech and patient language sections for what you may observe during your appointments with them. Then we, you can make extra notes at the bottom. That can help keep track of things that you may have observed that you know we don't want to lose those details. And then there's a spot down here for the referring physician, so your name, phone number, and your department, or the physician outside of our VA system. Okay. So, we, we need all those, those areas to form a really individualized intervention plan and really individualize the evaluation and assessment of these patients. This can help our differential diagnoses see where that problem is coming from and if there is more of a concern past that, do they need more neurological assistance? So that form really contains all the things that we need to know as audiologists and to help us make proper referrals and really focus on getting that patient the, the care that they need. This form is beneficial for all of us in the VA and outside. It is great for keeping track of all of that case history information. It keeps it organized for quick and easy reference. And it allows for the checking of boxes, but also for the referring physician to add their own notes, which I think is very important. All right. So thank you so much for listening and I hope that this new referral form can be a useful tool for you and in your collaboration with us and vice versa so we can be a very effective clinical team.